mapping parties because we are curious about the results of the mapping parties. So the people of the mapping parties, please come here. It was a, a, a fun, funny but also interesting experiment, so it was a scientific experiment and we will see which are the results. Did you, did you get good results from your mapping parties or not? Are you satisfied? Yeah. So, you have four minutes for every mapping party. And I start time. Okay. Okay, hello everybody. Uh, just some quick results on the OSM mapping party we had on uh, Wednesday. Uh, basically, the idea was to divide the city center of Como, or actually all the area, not just the city center, but from here up to the lake and the stadium in six areas, and to form uh, six groups, one, or actually five groups, because probably we, 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 we discarded one of them, and uh, so each one group for each area. Uh, the great news is that we had uh, 40 people and a gender imbalance, more females, so 24 females to <laughs> 16 males. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> it was very, very popular, uh, especially if you think that we had to walk uh, under the sun and uh, it was a, a very, very hot day. So, uh, well, uh, each group in turn divided the areas where to map. The idea was to use field papers. As many of you know, field papers are kind of uh, like, a, let's say, paper sheets. You go around, you just, with a pen, with a pencil, you take note of things that you see. Uh, the basic purpose was to take note of the building numbers, especially, and all the points of interest, like shops, uh, um, uh, attractions, and things like that. So bus stops and whatever. This is just an example. Um, we have already made a difference because uh, I have to say that we collected a huge amount of data. We were not able to upload all this data, all this data yesterday in uh, in the OSM database. Come on, Mingo. Uh, yeah, yeah. We have uh. nothing to do here, so, so sorry. <laughs> and uh, okay, but you can also, you can already appreciate some some good results. And uh, the the idea is that we will finish doing that during the next days, probably the next week, because uh, I also to mention that our the chair of the mapping of the OSM mapping party, Peter Mooney, is not here. He had to leave yesterday evening, and today he's uh, strongly working on, on this data. So <laughs> he's helping us. And uh, well, okay, here you have some numbers, but uh, you will find um, um, many, many more data next week, probably. Uh, Luca? Yeah. 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 At the end, for my point of view, I organized a lot of mapping party. It was a big success because uh, there was 40 people, and for my point of view, it was the biggest mapping party that uh, I was involved. And uh, we can show you some picture when we start the mapping party and divide. Peter was uh, explaining to the newbie how to map. Here are some picture of people involved. In, uh, yeah, involved in mapping and uh, co uh, collecting data and uh, everything. This was the, the <laughs> biggest problem. Yeah. yeah. There was no strong, otherwise it could be better, at least uh, some degree less. And uh, some information picture taken by the people in the involved. Here we was showing the day after, uh, on Tuesday, how to insert data on OpenStreetMap. We use the uh, Josman that is the best software for uh, the editing. And, uh, okay, other picture and some uh, result. Here you can see some uh, area where we ins insert data, some new addresses, some new information. We remove also some uh, uh, wrong data. And yeah, thank you to everybody. And, uh, yeah. So I, I, is there uh, is here someone uh, joining these mapping parties? Can, can you can you stand, stand up? up? Can stand up, please. I know that many many of you left already, but uh, we want really to thank yeah, you. Him. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now you know how to map, so please continue and don't stop here. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Beth. Okay, 
privately contact me and uh, I give you a little bit of uh, wine later. <laughs> okay, the second one. Okay, here we are to present the result for an indoor mapping party. And yeah, I'm alone because uh, Ludovico could not join, so he's sorry. And he say cheers to you. So starting from the location, instead of uh, frying outside like the others, we were inside. Yeah, it was not so fresh, but maybe better than uh, outside. We started with a, a very brief uh, overview of the indoor GML standard for the indoor uh, description. We looked at the tools used in, the, in this party, the desktop and the mobile application. So about what we produced, starting from the footprints of the Valigia building, we created, we, the guys, created the, the rooms. You can see it. Then they created the navigation graph for the inside. And the only navigation graph is this, both for the ground floor and for the first floor, you see. So it was uh, very hard for the guys to work with the tools because the, there is a new, it's a new technology, new tools, new ideas, new standards. So it was very hard. We took a bit of time in the first part to talk and to discuss about the standards. So I want to thank you all of the indoor pioneers that joined the party. And in particular, I would like to invite three people really, really strongly, hardly working on the indoor stuff. So Mara Branzanti, Juan Pedro and Anthony, please come here. I have something for you. Oh, awesome. Anthony, I see you. Come. Yeah, come. Come, oh, come. I also have Mara, something for you. I think Mara is not here, but we will send to her. So this is for the team. So no, this is for me, Maria. You can share. No, 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 no. You can share. So at the end, do, if you, do you want some wine? No, again, right? Probably the mapping will be a bit more creative after having drunk. Yeah, <laughs> I will be more creative. <laughs> Hi. Okay. Don't be shy, please. This is just a little. Uh, I, sorry, I cannot show you in bigger, but it's and uh, a certificate for the guys, because they are the, the first indoor pioneers. So, <laughs> Juan. <laughs> and Anthony. <laughs> Very good, thank you. And Mara and the wine, it's for me. Bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now the third, who is? Oh, VG and Irene now. VG are here? Okay, so the land cover validation game. So did you play the game? No? Yeah, somebody did. So uh, we were trying, I just reminded you, we were trying to validate uh, the correspondence between uh, the land cover classification provided by Lombardy and by uh, Globeland 30. So let's see together what were the results? Uh -huh. So first, the validation. So we had uh, 52 players who played more than 14 hours in total. So more than one and a half day of conference, more or less. <laughs> uh, so you, instead of attending the conference. Yeah, they were playing. <laughs> so we validated 1,151 pixels out of the uh, 1600 that were our targets. So we have almost 72% of completion rate. So thank you. Uh, just to give you some more evaluation numbers, uh, we were um, uh, validating more or less 80 pixels per hour. Uh, each player on average played more or less 16 minutes. And so it means that each player uh, on average contributed to uh, validate 22 pixels. So regarding the validation, so uh, of those, uh, how many were? So of those pixels, uh, 
uh, almost 90% were in agreement with the local Lombardy uh, land, uh, land cover classification. 10% uh, more or less uh, uh, agree with the Chinese Global Authority classification. And there's also less than 1% of people that, who, 1% of pixels on which we disagree with both classifications. So, uh, uh, food for thought. So, now, since we also have some awards for the first three, so first of all, I have to say that uh, the players crashed the server twice in those two days. <laughs> so thank you. Um, uh, there was a, a great race for the first, uh, uh, for the first uh, uh, place in the leaderboard. So now VG, since uh, we also have the same experience of Marco, because um, most uh, girls participated to, to the game. So I leave the floor uh, to VG to uh, show who won on the leaderboard. Hi. So I guess the winners, they already know the results, but still, <laughs> okay. The winners are the first three positions were occupied by Mariam Loftian. Uh, I would like please to come. ask them to come on the stage, please, to collect their gifts. Then the second position goes to. It's very difficult to pronounce. Uh, I will call her with her nickname, Natina. I guess it's better the second position. Then third position is uh, grabbed by Irene. Okay. And there are like many people played. I, I'm very happy. And A small award, it's a mug, <laughs> Polytechnico mug. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, okay now we go and drink the wine. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, one last thing, uh, the, the game is, is still online, so if you like, go on playing. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. And now it's also clearer to me because, in fact, women are able to do two things at the same time. So they were able to attend the conference at the same time to, to play the game. Mm. Okay, the last, the last one. So, Ao Sheng, Eleonora. Uh, hello. Uh, so, we'd like to show you the results of the emotional mapping party. So, do you, know what, do you want to know how people feel about the cities of Como? I would like to tell you the results. Because basically we have about 72 contributors and sorry about most of the people are male. Sorry about that. <laughs> and yes, most of them are young people and also they have the work. So we have 72. But I have to say that basically these 72 are people also from the general public, not only the conference participants. And in total, we can let uh, 216 uh, contributions. And on average, we have three contributions per, per users. So I, as you can see on this graph, most of the users only contribute one or two ratings. And all the, there are several others contribute a lot. And they will be the winners. And I would like to show you this. This is the results of the, the points we can let. So the, each point represents uh, uh, emotional ratings. And different color means different emotions. For example, the, the green color means people feel very comfortable, very positive there. And the, the, the red one and the yellow one means people feel uncomfortable. As you can see, basically, in the city center of Como, people feel very, very comfortable. But there are also some other places, especially close to the train station here, people feel they don't like that place. And here, from here, basically, you also discover that for a particular place, people, different people have different emotions. So maybe for particular people, they, they like this place, but for the others, they don't like. So I would like to give you an aggregate view of these contributions. So basically, this is the aggregate view. And the, 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 uh, uh, the same, the color means, the, red, the green color means people feel comfortable. And uh, the red one means uncomfortable. So basically, you can really see that the city center is very really comfortable. But 
And but somewhere in the, the train station lately, people don't, don't like them. And basically, the next step for us is to understand why, why make people feel comfortable at the place, and why probably for some particular places, why they don't like. So this is the next step we are going to do. So we are, we are try to, we will try to analyze the data and then to, to correlate with the environment to understand or what happens, why people feel uncomfortable or comfortable at that place. And as I mentioned, we also have, also in general, basically we can say the, the average emotional rating for, emo, for Como is 5.21. So this is from the level of one to seven. So it's comfortable in general. And we can say that different environments cause different emotional response. And different people have different emotions response to the, uh, uh, for example, to the same environment. And this might depend on the, the time of the date. Also may, may depend on the context. For example, when you go with your friends, probably you have a different emotion or different emotional response compared to maybe when you are alone. So there are a lot of factors to analyze. But I have to mention that this is a research project. So we are, for the bigger pictures, we would like to understand, okay, which kind of environments cause kind of which kind of affected response and why and then maybe we can use this data to provide better services or for the cities or other applications. And basically we say we also have some winners, but unfortunately we cannot name them because we didn't connect any names. <laughs> because we, we, this is purposely, because we don't really want to collect the names because we would like our people just to contribute because there's, all this information are sensitive information. So we don't want to link this information to a particular persons. But in general, we can say that the champion is a man, man. And he was born in 1980 and have about 41 contributions. <laughs> so if you match this profile, please come here and show the mobile phone to me. And basically the gift would be something very sweet. It's a particular gift from, from Austria. How many of you know this? Yeah. If you, know this, you don't know this, you should go, let me go to Austria and try this. It's really one, very, very nice. And oh, Sheng, I'm a female born in 1987. Okay. <laughs> in that case, you should find Ronaldos. Yes. That's <laughs> nice. not true. Yeah, let me continue. It's not true. So this Thank is for you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. And the second place is the a female, and the birth year was is 1987, and have 30 contributions. And the last, the third place is the male, and have the the birth year is 1983, and the 20 have 27 contributions. So you match this profile to really come to Ilonano and get get this chocolate. And the last one is that because probably. On that day where it was very hot and you, you, don't want, you didn't want to go out, but still you can contribute. You can still contribute. So you can download emo map from uh, Google Play or AppSoft and try that. Because on the, basically when you download, you can also see other people, all other people's contributions. And basically I have to say thank you to these open source communities because the emo map was developed based on open source technology. Thank you. And you can also find all the source codes on GitHub. And thank you very much for the participations. Thank you. Yes, and now at that point, we are also curious about uh, the other experiment we did, we have done during this conference that was sensing the conference, what you think, the tweets, the pictures you send around in the environment, we were able to capture what you did and now we want to know what are your emotion on the other side. So not related to uh, this volunteer uh, experiment, but just because you sent uh, tweets or something like that. So I leave the word to Marco, who prepared that was the designer and the developer of uh, uh, this app that was the uh, Phosphor-G e app. Just to explain you uh, which are the results. Thank you. Thank you, Maria. 
Hello, everybody. So, uh, first of all, thank you for being here and especially for downloading our app. As you know, the app was the official app of the conference. Uh, we managed to have um, significant usage during these three days. Actually, it wasn't used in the previous ones in the beginning, but within these last uh, two days and a half, because the, obviously the, I prepared this a few hours ago, we had more than 160 users that counts almost to 50% of the participants and 7,000 screen views, meaning that people actually used the app and go, went around uh, trying to understand what the program, the complex program was organized and how. Um, interesting analytics. Most of you, as expected, are using Android, but we have a plenty of iOS, <laughs> okay, no, no applause, please. <laughs> plenty of iOS uh, 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 adapters as well. Uh, you see also a small map down there showing that the app was not used only in Italy. Uh, this is kind of curious because it's meant to be used here, but we had people in, in China actually trying to understand what was, what was going on in these days. Um, anyways, the app will be on the stores uh, uh, continuously, so you can download it uh, in the future. Some of you may know that we spread around the conference some beacons, and actually there are a few it actually is there. You see the, that small blue thing on the, on the camera just uh, above the photographer here. It's one of the beacons we spread around. And uh, basically, if you have the app and you activate your Bluetooth, you would be notified about what's happening in the room at the moment. Um, so this was a little bit less popular as a feature. And we had only a few notifications in these days, order of 100, uh, where most of it were about the, track, uh, the first tracks in the first day. So, and then the, uh, and, and the track number one and track number two. Um, but still, this was the very first experiment we did, so we are happy about that. And the second part of the experiment was about the social media, as, uh, as uh, Maria was pointing out. If you go to that uh, URL, fotel.com slash phos4g.e, you can find real-time analytics of social media in Como regarding the conference. And there you'll find uh, something about the location of the, of the contributions. If you activate your geopositioning when you tweet or take pictures, it will appear on the map automatically. Here, down there, you see two tweets actually in the area of the conference, considering the error of the GPS coordinates of the phones, actually. Um, but the most interesting, what we did was to try to understand what was the contribution of the conference with respect to the total uh, uh, mass of social content that was produced in the city. So this was for July 15th. The dark blue line is the total social media content produced in Como, and the light blue area is the one from the conference. So basically, I think you took over the entire city, at least virtually, in these two days. This is for July 15th, and this is July 16th. So pretty, pretty impressive. So congratulations to the participants. Um, same thing actually happened for topics and tags in the city because we are capturing all what happens in the city and as you see the FOS4G was the most popular uh, hashtag. So on the left hand side you have the hashtags. So even though Lake Como is very popular from a touristic perspective, FOS4G definitely uh, uh, won the challenge here and then a little bit more uh, technical hashtags like uh, point cloud was well known. The no, not technical, the special, yeah, the, yeah, the dance probably, yeah. <laughs> the, oops, sorry. And, uh, and on the other side, here on the right, you have the semantic analysis of the content where we don't look only at the, on the, to, the, to the hashtags, but to any kind of entity that is mentioned in the, to in the topic and in the text of the social contributions. So you see that the whirlwind, uh, the NASA World Window is one of the most popular, but the free and open source software is the most important topic in the city in these days. And then going down, okay, uh, you have uh, the, the uh, foundation, the open source, the special foundations, Patrick Hogan, and so on. Um, finally, we have a pretty popular analysis we do is the topic chart. This is a top. This is a chart where you see the main topic. Every top, the, the size of the balls of the points is how many times the topic or hashtag is mentioned. The, depending on how close the topics are, you see how frequent they are mentioned together. 
And then you see that some clusters appear here and there of topics and subtopics. So the global, the, obviously the center is the phosphor G again. We have uh, pl some users that are the most popular ones spread around and then sub subtopics uh, separated. So actually the most, uh, and here you see how things evolved in days. Phosphor G is always more or less always the, the most popular one, but you see another sub uh, cluster uh, born here, down here, another one up there, and the other one uh, to the top. So actually the most challenging thing from a technical perspective was the fact that, unfortunately, actually for you, we have a completely separated cluster here, Como, that is talking about uh, lake, food, uh, um, fashion, and uh, free time and relax, while all of you are probably on the right hand side of the picture, so I'm sorry about that. <laughs> and finally, the most popular users, definitely the top one is the official of the conference, but I have to <laughs> say that, it, and we, we didn't cheat here. She's really the second one in, uh, in, in, uh, in charge, and uh, Maria is uh, the top one, and then the other mm, decreasing in popularity. So given that she was the first one here, and in several moments she was even more popular than the, than the mayor of the city, and I guess she's <laughs> definitely <laughs> more than <laughs> proud of this. I think we can honor the, the, the Meyer title to Maria for these days and hand her the, the key of the city of Como. And if the key doesn't work, we have another kind of key that we can provide. <laughs> because I'm the queen of Phosphor G. Okay, sorry, so sorry. you can be at the same so, time major and queen. I don't okay, think so. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I, I thought it was some democracy in place here. But <laughs> no, no, yeah, there is no democracy. Exactly. No, no, no. So, okay, <laughs> okay thank you. Thanks. Thank you so much. Okay.